קילומטרים בישראל. Um, we'll try and at least reach some sort of conclusion before 10 o'clock to allow whoever wants to go to uh, that means that I'm to allow gonna... Phil to go uh, Now, if you have, excuse me, if you have a minion, we can wait and do the minion after I finish speaking. That can be okay too, okay? So we'll start, we, we, I hope to have, that will have time also for some uh, questions. I'm going to try making it short in order for you to have uh, questions also for, uh, also for what I've always said and also for me. Oh, one second. I have to take my WhatsApp out of here because it's never going to have a lot of noise. One second. Oh, okay. Thank you. Okay, so I'm uh, Debbie Breitbart. I am a social worker. My first and my primary uh, job is in Male Adumim as a caregiver. As a, they call it in Hebrew, Bnei Mishpacha Metaplim, a social worker for Bnei Mishpacha Metaplim, um, a part that has only 30 places in Israel have exactly social worker for that. I know that in Ayanana, they have somebody that they're doing things. You can try and find it out. Matosin. Um, Sorry. Go out. No, I know it is, but we have to find it and we have to get to it. I don't know if you know how to I can't find it. No, I don't have it anymore. You don't have it anymore either. He just wants to bother me. Um, okay. Fine. Okay. Sorry. Again, I don't know. Sorry. I tried finding it. I don't know. Maybe it's going to get go away by itself. Okay, so I'm and I work with Saad Navi Slim as uh, the head of the social service department in that project. Okay, I, as you see, my English, I go between Hebrew and English. I was born in America. I came to Israel when, when I was three. So my English is okay, but I hope we're gonna challenge. It's, it's a challenge this, it's this evening for me. So we'll start. Um, so I'm sorry if I'm gonna start and go from Hebrew and English. My point and sound, sound a little bit. Uh, I'm in. I'm in my job already for thirty years. So the elderly is very new. It's not new to me. I work with it. I do everything. I deal with it. All the time, I did. I deal. I dealt with families all the time, actually. But no, but it wasn't as a job. It was like part of the job, meeting with the family, trying to see where the family is. Now, what we do is trying to see where the caregiver is. I think the caregiver needs a place, a place to talk, a place to see where he is. So, what we're trying, to, and there is in Israel, there's the muta of caregiver Israel that they do a lot of lectures and things you can look at and, and cite. Um, but we'll see some, we'll start, okay? When I do a job, I, I just finished, I just said, said somebody asked me, so I said to her, here, I just finished a group of eight sessions for caregivers in English. I did it, I do it with another lady. Um, of an hour and a half every time, but. No, we're talking, I'm talking about family members and we're gonna to get to it, but I'm talking about family members. Well, I'm talking, we're talking about caregivers, we're talking about you, okay? We'll talk about the difference about pay and thing afterwards. Um, we just finished a course of eight sessions of an hour and a half every, eight. I'm gonna try in the, in the half an hour that I have to do a little bit of everything of what we did and give you a little bit of tips, okay? Because I was asked by your rabbi to give on caregivers. So that's where we're gonna start. Um, let's start. 
Vasilikara said, there are only four kinds of people in the world. Those who had been caregivers, those who are currently caregivers, those that will be caregivers, and, and those that will need caregivers. That's life. We can fight it, or we can learn how to deal with it and try being part of it and, and dealing because we're dealing with it because this is life, like a lot of things. Um, but as you said, yes, if it's uh, caregivers that you paid or not. There are formal, formal caregivers and there are, oops, there are formal or informal uh, caregivers. The informal caregivers, uh, the formal, the formal. If I'm not mistaken, in my English now, the formal is the one that we pay for. We pay for. They come. They come from, or they come for the whole day, or the whole day, 24 hours, or they come in the morning at eight o'clock. They leave at four, and the rest is hours. You have like that, and you have like that. You have the 24 hours that stay and live there all the time. We pay them. It's their job. They do it. They do it the best they can, but they do it the way they do it, as they get paid for. It's a job. And we have the informal, that's us, all of us. I was a caregiver. I'm now a little bit of a caregiver with my mother that uh, be healthy. And, uh, and that's part of life, like, like I said before him. That's, that's what we are. Um, so who can be a caregiver? Who can be a caregiver? It's a wife, it's a husband, it's a child. It's a daughter-in-law, it's a son-in-law. It's the grandchildren. Yes, the grandchildren can be part of it. And we're gonna speak about it afterwards. It's the sister, it's the brother, it's the nephew sometimes. I have a lot of patients that it's the nephews. Sometimes it's only the nephew. My daughter is learning um, law and, and social worker. And today I met her, she had something with the social worker. She said to me, I'm going now to send somebody to the hospital. And she sent her by herself. I said, oh, she doesn't have family, she said, no. She has only a nephew somewhere that probably will meet her in the hospital. That's life, again. She's single, she never got married. That's who she has now when she gets it. She's 78 and she's by herself. It's sad, but she's trying to manage with the nephews. Um, so that's that. Um, with the life going, getting, uh, get, get going everybody is getting older. Like if my grandmother, I don't remember because she passed away when I was four. My children have a grandmother. My, my grandchildren have a great grandmother, Baruch Hashem. That's with them. Something that we didn't have. Who do you think, how, much do you, how many people do you think that are caregivers in, in, uh, in the country? Yeah, I'm sorry, talking about Israel. Give a number, how many caregivers? Now, you're, you're a little bit, you're a little bit, a little bit exaggerated. It's a, uh, and what's the age of the caregivers? What? I came here. 50, 60s. And, and who, who are the primary caregivers? Spouse or children. Spouse or children. Somebody said daughters. Woman, men, what do you think more? Working, not working. You got, you got good answers. I'm gonna say it though. There's a one million, one million and five uh, caregivers who are 30% of the elderly, elderly uh, population in Israel. The age average is, as you said, is 50, to 60, 50 and even 60 and up. I had somebody that was over 70 taking care of his mother that was 90. That is hard, very hard. Two thirds of them are wives, daughters, and daughter-in-laws. That's life, guys, sorry. That's, who, that's who's gonna take care of you. 80, 80, um, 60 percent are still working. That makes it even harder. Trying to work with it, it's harder. But this statistic I loved, 80%, 89%, it's almost 90% feel very satisfied of taking care of, the, of the, the person in the house. And that's amazing. But how do we take care? 
So taking what's what's what does he have to do the caregiver? He has to have you have to have personal care, you have to have medical care, you have to have mental care, mental mental health care, and you have to have emotional care. We're gonna go in and do one on one and see what it is exactly. Um, that's pretty important to see. Personal care that we know it's groceries, doing the groceries, doing the meals, doing the doing the housekeeping, doing the, the personal cleaning, bathing, and things like that. Sometimes a lot of families find, like, like Arav, Arav said about the fact of kibbutz Avrem, for the washing part to bring somebody from outside and not to do it by yourself. It depends also on the, on the person. My father, Allah Shalom, didn't let anybody from the family, not my husband, not even my husband, it's not his son, deal with those things. No. Only somebody from outside. So you have to respect what they want. Um, that's the person. The person. The person. The one is 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 uh, easy. Um, med med medical care. You have to go buy the medicine. You have to ma manage the medicine. You have to go to doctors. That's something that that's a, one advice. Don't let your parents go to the doctors by yourself. Cheder miyun is something, emergency room, that they do not go by themselves, even if they're a couple. Nope. Elderly people do not get to the emergency, emergency room by yourself. You know what? I don't want to go to the emergency room by myself, even if I have to. I would prefer somebody, if it's one of my kids or my husband in my case, but the, the elderly do not. They don't. It's not that the doctors don't want to take care of them. But they go to the young ones first. That's again, that's part of and then I and I don't blame them. The, the stress and the omis, the load that they have in the in the emergency rooms is so big that if somebody is not standing and asking the doctor again what's going on and, and trying to, to move the things, nothing's gonna do. I, I, I see that it's really bothering you. Yeah. Oh, really, really sorry. Why is it bothering you? It's on the side. Uh, no, it's it's gone for a second, and the minute I put up the screen, the screen on top. You need the internet connection now. No. Ah, now it got connected. Before it wasn't. Yeah, no. It... I got connected from my phone. Okay, I will continue. It's a waste of time. You have to go to the doctors, um, but we have a problem. Not every elderly will let you go with them. the doctor. They will say no. I can go by myself. So you can do you can do something like that. You can start with family doctor. Okay, let them go by themselves. And ask them just to bring a sheet, what the doctor said, that you can read in order for you to understand, in order for you to understand, and help them. Okay? Because when I'm talking about that, that means that he can go by himself. Because being a caregiver doesn't mean that you always have to be there. Like I said, I am a caregiver to my mother. My mother is totally, she does it, she's in a lapna with her friends. She can do everything by herself, but she lives by herself. During the day, I sit at work and look, wait, did she send me a WhatsApp to say that she woke up this morning? Is everything okay? She's close, she's 80, 85 years old. I have to know that she woke up in the morning. The minute she woke up in the morning, fine, do whatever you want. In the afternoon, I call again. Everything is going good. Continue doing do, it, do it your own stuff. But something is, it's not like she was young and she I didn't care. She was a miracle. She came and she go. She doesn't do whatever she wants. But now it's a little bit, you you go. You, something, something's bothering you the whole day. Something is again, like she says, I have a seventh child. She said, I'm not the seventh child. That's what I get all the day. But now she agreed to the fact that she's a seventh child. It's not going to help. That's part of it. Okay, that's a caregiver. So with her, what we did is family doctor, she goes by herself. But when it's a serious doctor, something that is a little bit more, that we said that it's for us to calm us down. Not for you, I'm not going for you. It's to calm us down, to understand what's going on. Oh, you could tell them, look, when you go to a doctor, you have to see who your person that you're talking to and deal. Or you can tell them, look, when you go to a doctor, I know when I go to a serious doctor, I want somebody sitting there with me because then somebody else is hearing what the doctor says. He says a lot of things. He says a lot of 
Sorry, he's against you. Um, but you can actually you can never mind. Um, let's continue. Um, if you what else came on now? Go on. Um, if we so we need another person next to us in order for us to understand what's going on. And, and, and for her to understand, and for her, for him, it doesn't matter what's going on. That's not going to the doctors. Um, yay! He didn't change the slide. He stayed on the same slide. He was fine. Um, and we said mental health care. What does that mean? Check. Look, an elderly can lose it a little bit, but he's allowed. I forget sometimes too. It's fine. We all forget. We stress the thing. We forget things. But sometimes it's a little bit more, and that you have to pay attention to, because sometimes, especially by men, they can start being a little bit hallucinated, a little bit like talk, forgetting things at all, and a little bit hard to walk. It can say that they have an infection in their body, and it's something that you will not pay attention only because you paid attention to what something is losing. That another another little tip. When somebody starts to lose it a little bit and it's nothing, like it's not came gradually. Just got up in the morning and started to talk nonsense and he is very hard on him to walk. Like he says that it's hard on him and he feels like, take him to the doctor to check a urine test. From my, I'm not a doctor. It's only experience of 30 years. A urine test, a, special, a, a simple urine test. One of my friends called me one, once, as a Monte Shabbos, crying on the phone. She was on the way to her parents' house. My father, the whole Shabbos, was, talk, was talking nonsense. What happened to him? He can't walk. My mother doesn't know what to do. What? I said to her, and they ordered a doctor. I said to her, when you get there, tell a doctor. Be sure. That, I said, I not tell a doctor because I never tell a doctor. Do? Not a doctor. I said, be sure that he does a urine test. She said to me, what? I said, he has. He probably has a urine infection. Oh, sure. I was right. The first thing that he, he they came in and he, they asked if he did a urine test. So, oh, you're right. I'm going to do. He did it with the stick. That was the answer. That was the end of it. And he was fine afterwards. Um, uh, stimulation. I put it in the, in the medical care because I think it's very medical. A person has to be out of the house and, uh, and active or, or active in the house. If not, this is medical, he's going to go down totally. If he doesn't do things, if he sits near the TV all the day long, he's going to need a lot of medicine. He's going get, to get, get into a depression and he's just don't call, talk, play, games, whatever, whatever you think, learn. You know that my father, Allah Shama, loved learning. Used to learn. And the only thing he really liked is going to Mencha. At one o'clock, he went to Mencha. At one, 120 was Mencha. And Lori remembers it. Um, at 120, I was near the house with the car taking it. And when I couldn't, my dear friend, husband over there, was there for, I used to call him, Eric, come now. And he used to go and take him to Mencha because that was important for his doing. He used to go to Mencha, used to give a lecture there. Every week, he used to give a lectures there. And for him, it was important. So we managed everything around that he's going to get when he needs. And that's hard. It's not easy. Um, emotional, emotional care. A lot of empathy. A lot, a lot of empathy. To understand, to show them that what? Empathy. That you really understand, really, really understand what they're going through, because it's hard on them. Think, a person, look at yourself now, what you're doing now, and and I hope not, but you finished working, you're not working anymore, you're sitting in the house, the kids, he doesn't have kids to deal with, nothing. It's hard. It's hard to sit in that, and then you have the physical thing that he cannot walk now and if he, if he loved running and he can't run anymore, be there for them. Just listen, okay? Just, and the, the third one is listen. 
listening. Yeah, listen. Just listen. Sometimes it's only to listen. There's a whole story that I won't tell you. We say in the, in the thing, very short one, of a mother that uh, a mother that called the, the daughter every day. She used to call her every day when she gives supper. Every day, point when she's giving supper to the five kids that she has, the mother called. And she didn't have patience to talk to her. So she always she was used to call. She used to say to her, okay, I'm going to make the appointment for the physical therapy. I'm gonna... The mother didn't want that. The mother wanted her to listen. And it got to a point that the mother, somebody told the mother, when do you call and put, put it to her that she calls in the wrong time. And when she told the mother, Ima, please call me in a different time and then I will listen. And then she sat and listened. She doesn't need, not always they need the solution. Let them, ask them if they want a solution. First, listen. And now I'm getting to the fact that maybe some of you are caregivers to parents that are not, not next to you. I mean, out of the country. That can be the biggest job for your siblings that are next to them. Just listen to the parents. In the group, I had somebody that his mother is in, in, in the States and the mother drives his sister bananas because she wants somebody to listen to him. He leaves, he's a doctor in Adassa and Karim. He leaves his office every day. He picks up his phone and the whole way from Adassa and Karim, until Ma'ala Dumim, it's close to an hour, he speaks to his mother. That's what he does every day. He said, nothing. I just, I just let her, I just, I don't, I don't even speak. She speaks. It's like, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And he's a man, so a man doesn't speak back. It's, mm-hmm, 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 mm-hmm. That's what he does. He said, that's what I do the whole, the whole time. And she afterward, his sister said, after she speaks to you, the whole evening until the next morning, I don't have a phone call. No, she got what she needs. They need to be listened. They said, think about it. They sit in the house by themselves the whole day. You can go crazy. I know that I would have gone crazy. I hope not to be there, be like that when I get old, but for now. And patience. When you have to listen, you have to have patience. Patience to listen, patience to. Sometimes you tell them to do something and they do the opposite. And when they hear it from somebody else, they're going to do exactly, they hear from somebody else from outside the same thing that you said, then they're going to listen. Then it's fine because somebody else said it. If you say it's not, but then that's our parents. We can change them and we won't change them. Okay? And just remember it not to be like that for your kids. Whoops. Why the ah, no, Okay. Um, so, but being a caregiver is a big load. It's a big load on the sandwich, sandwich generation. Um, because we have our own families and we have our partners and we have our job and we have our, our friends and we have our hobbies that we want to continue a little bit to do them, but we still take care of our parents and do whatever we said before. So it's a little bit of a problem getting everything together. But one thing I have to say before we get into how do we do it is taking care of, of an elderly parent does not mean that you change rules. No, a lot of people I would say one in Hebrew how to, because it sounds a little bit more strong. Some people comes to me and says to me, Nope, no, 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 no. Yes, the jobs, I changed. The rules, no. A mother and a father stay the mother and father, even when they're not slowly, they're not, yeah, you see, I so, tell you, told you I'm going to get stuck. They're not, they're not uh, the, the senile. They're not a uh, com compass centered. It's a hard word for me to remember. Sorry. Um, so even then, of course you do the things for them and at first you do everything for them like you're their parents. Yes, of course that's the, but feel if the minute you say to yourself that the parent, the role changes, that's how you're gonna be, that's how you're gonna feel. Don't, don't feel that. Because the parent has to be your parent and you have to respect them as their parents and ask them, ask them what they want. Sometimes it's only asking. But how do we do it, okay? So how do we do it and stay, and stay, stay sane? Oops, that's a big one. First of all, first and, 
and, and the most important, I, I think it's the most important, where you work, go into your boss and tell them what's going on. That you are busy now, you're, you're gonna do your best, but you still have another load on you. They have to know. First of all, in Israel today, the fact of caregivers is getting to be very big. Then it's Yibutam Dina have started to do things in giving hours. You can get, you get six days of illness for your parent. Um, uh, there's a point in Masach Nasa also that you can get because you're taking care of your parent. If you decide to leave your work in order to take care of your parent, you're going to get your pension. It's not leaving like you're not leaving by yourself. There are laws that protect the caregivers. And people are more neglected. A lot of bosses are more neglected. Um, what can you say? Like more for it today to understand what's going on. And I can tell you about the fact of myself. When I had to get a 120, I worked a half, half, uh, half uh, Misra then, and I finished that one. But sometimes there was things that I had to do. I remember once I had a big meeting <clears throat> with a lot of bosses that came. They came late. We were supposed to come at 12. We were supposed to finish at 1. We came at 12.30. My uh, supervisor, my, my, my boss, said to me, don't worry, you are one are going. She knew that at one point I have to pick up my father to show sure. That it wasn't, wasn't a, I, my, my pen fell. It, it didn't bother anybody. I didn't care. And she said to me, and I didn't pay attention. We were talking, and she looked at me, Debbie. She said at the beginning of the meeting, she said to everybody, Debbie has to leave at 1. She has to leave. That's life. You came late, but she has to leave. And at one o'clock, she paid attention. I didn't, she said to Debbie, you have to go. And I left. And that's what she was for me. And the fact that she understood, I will give other hours, but this was important for me. So yeah, you, you give and take, okay? Um, involving everybody that you can in, in, the, in the immediately family. That means again, the grandchildren, the, your spouse, the grandchildren, whoever can help, whoever can be a grand, a, a little child can come and sit by the parents and just sit there and play with them, bring homework to do next to them. It will be a lack. Somebody is there; they're not by themselves. Little little things. I know that we. What I suggest a lot of families that have a lot of big, big kids, if they have adults. I suggest them to open, to tell the kids, to open a grandchildren's watch up and let them decide. And tell them once a week, once a week, one grandson comes for two hours. Once a week, let them decide by themselves how do they do it. And that means that if you have five grandchildren, the, the first person has five. Once a five weeks, a grandson has to come to Safta or the Sabbath and sit there for, for two hours. And uh, an hour, I don't care. Just come to visit and see what they need. An hour and five weeks. I think everybody, even somebody that lives very far can do it. The same way they go, go to weddings, if they know it before and if they have it, then. But I usually, what I do is I just leave it. I did it with my family too. I just leave it to the kids. Let them decide, let them do. So what happened was during Corona, they decided that everybody calls. And then they made a birthday party outside and they organized it and we came as guests. Like it, it, it made, and you know what it made them more? Like all the cousins got together. They're very close to each other. They have a WhatsApp that they talk about us without us knowing. That's a, another good thing. Um, don't don't uh, forget yourself and your partners and, and the sport that you like. Try finding that time for it, especially your partner. That's something that you do not have to forget because they're there, they see how you work hard, but they're there. Keep it over here that they need you to sometimes. Um, asking for help, help from friends like I did. When I got stuck, I used everybody around, wherever I could. I'm, a, I'm alone, my, I have a sibling and I have a sibling and a father, I have a sibling and a Tanya, but that's too far. They can't come from now to now. So my friends knew. I have doctor friends that came to the house whenever I need it, because I just use whoever I can. Um, neighbors, and as she said beforehand, money. You, or, you, or, you take somebody to be from eight to, to four, you're, you're afterwards, or somebody that goes, 
somebody that comes during the day to help her do, I don't know what. Like, whoever you need, you take something and pay. I, uh, and the most important thing that I wanted to talk about is the, uh, job divisions. And what I mean by job division is you have siblings. You have to divide who does what, but how we do, how do we divide? Um, divide by the way somebody work, uh, somebody thinks. There are people, like, like I said before, whoever lives out of the country can do talking to be, to be the emotion part and can do the internet things. Everything can be on the internet today. If you have to send a letter to someplace for them to get, I know that what one of my friends did is she gave her brother all the material to fight Bituach Lumi. He did it in the internet. He did everything online. He doesn't have to talk to anybody, to anybody. Do it online. Whatever you can do online, give whoever's far away to do. To make appointments, doctor's appointments. I forgot to say it by the doctor's appointment. If you are in the same kupa, every time you go to the doctor, if they let you to go to the family doctor, do two appointments. Give time. Okay, so I went back for a second, sorry. But again, I'm talking about the division is try finding whoever can help the best in the world. Whoever's, some people have a hat that they're very, very uh, they're very uh, creative. So let them do the creative, the, 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 think, the thinking of, and another way of taking care of something. If somebody is very particular and has to know, understand everything and find all the, all the medical issues, let them go into the internet, sit and give you all, and then put it in some place that all of you talk together. You have to work together. You cannot, even if this, and that's what we're trying, that's what we do a lot in so too, getting the family to do things together. So that's the only, first of all, the parent will, will show, it will see that you're working together for them. It's the most nachas can be. That's the most best thing for it to be, okay? Um, that's the job uh, division. What else do we have here? Oops, sorry. Decision making. We got to the point, the, to the hardest point. How do we make decisions? How do we decide what to do? So I am not looking on my notes at all. I hope I'm not forgetting things, but fine. Try understanding um, what they want. As I said beforehand, Talk to them. Everything that you want to do, what do you want to do? Listen, this is the situation. What do you want to do? When they can decide. Okay, try talk. Try listening to what they want. Don't do things about, uh, about, um, behind their back. It's not, it's not going to be, it's, it's just going to make them upset. And it's going to, it's going to be into a, like a, a toll of they're getting upset, you're getting upset, and, and you won't get, gain anything. Talk. Sit and talk. What do you want to do? This is the situation. You want to go to this doctor. You want to go to this doctor. That's when they can decide. When they can decide, it's a different situation. But when they can decide, that's uh, that's the best thing. Um, and if they can't decide, try remembering what they wanted. What they used usually. What what could have if they could have said what would have they said? What they said. Like I have uh, always said beforehand. What they said on the grandfather, what they said when the grandfather was, the, was ill, what they said when the husband was ill, everything, all those kinds of things. Try understanding what they would have wanted. Get the most information from all doctors that you can in order for you to see the whole picture. And not only what this doctor said, sometimes you have to go to, sometimes when they get a lot of pills, you have to go to a geriatric and do what they, what they call izunto fatigue. Is managing the, the understanding that the whole um, all pills that they're getting are not connecting each other. They're not that something is that something is not wrong. Be sure that everything is organized and they know what they're taking. Be sure there's the backs of giving morning night morning night and uh, morning afternoon and night. Use that. It's easier. Put them come in the more come once a week. Prepare it for them. They have it. They know how to deal with it. It's much easier. Um, I said, consult your siblings. Do not decide by yourself. When it, now we're going to get to the to the fact of uh, life and death. And 
and he retired. When I was talking to somebody on the way, she called me, she said to me, my father is on, he says that he wants to die. He's not eating. He got an, he got an infection, in, infection, he got into the hospital, in the hospital he got another infection. They, they took a, a one, the other one, and he's like, he's, he's going down. He's close to 90. He says that he doesn't want to die. We do not know what to do. I said, so what's the problem? I said, she just says, I don't, I can't, I can't. I said to her, but that's what your father wants. So you won't kill him, but you're going to let him, you won't do anything else. Like Arav Uri said, you will not. If he's suffering and the doctor says that he is not, that he is not, uh, that he doesn't have, that he, there's a musag in Hebrew that says, I don't know if there is a musag in English there. That they, they say it, but what? What? Say it again. Okay. It's a definition of the law. If the doctor says that, just so let him let him do what he wants. Okay. But what can we do before him? And I asked her, I asked her, did he did he sign? Did he sign you put off in enduring uh uh, power of attorney. That's something that all of us have to sign. Do you know what endurance power of attorney is? If we call me Moshech, did you hear that? That's something that all of us have to. That gives you an opportunity to say today when you are, when you know what you want, to say who you want to be taken care of that will take care of you, and who will be your big and giant job. Who's going to be? Who's going to take care of your money? Who's going to take care of your health? What kind of health? There's a, it's like, I think it's a, it's a big thing that you do by a lawyer. It's a special lawyer that does it. And you sit with them and you really you really go point by point what you want. You want to be resuscitated. You want to be tubed. You want to be, you don't want to, you don't want to do whatever. It's just like goes one where they go into really little details when they, when they uh, fill it out. And it's important, and who will take care of you? That's what's important. You can do it only on your only on the health issues, and you can do it on the health and the and the and the financial. A lawyer that I work with doesn't like the financial. And why? She said that the financial is a problem. Because today your kids are very nice, they're very good, and you decided that you want to live in a very, very big house in Ranana in the house. There's a, it's, a, it's a true story, what I'm saying. And in, a, in, in your room with a TV and a pool and everything, that's where you want to live. You got to a point that you can't do anything in the pool. You can't do anything in the courtyard, any, nothing. You stay in your room the whole time. And the house costs money. You could say, hey, it's a waste of money. Let's move our payment to a small house or to a home. And we'll save money and we'll give the money to her. We're not taking the money yet. I don't want that. I want, I want to chas v'chalila go to heaven in my room, in my bed. Don't move me. That's what we want. That's something that they say. And the kids are not being mean. And they're very nice now. You don't know. Well, that's how she puts it. I don't agree with that, but that's how she puts it as a way. Okay? I'm, I'm putting the two things to think about. I don't want to, I don't want to be a, uh, to, towards one side. There's two sides to every every penny. Okay, so that's that's the Yipri Koch Mitmashech. There is also the Horaot Magdimu, and that he spoke a little bit, is really saying, and that you can you can fill out, and it's once in five years you have to fill it out again, and that we don't have to do. But Yipri Koch Mitmashech is very good because it's going to make our kids' life much easier. <laughs> because if not, they have to do a power of attorney, um, a photopus, and that takes long, and it's a pain. And you know what the, the biggest problem with the photopus is? Mm -hmm. That afterwards you have to declare every financial thing that you take out to the government. With you put Koch Mitmashech, you don't have to. And that, think about it. That's something I think. But I'm gonna get to the subject that I am here because it's so, so I will take, give you a little bit of, of that, about the fact of uh, um, uh, 
Okay. Um, how do we get the decision? I, and why do I set? Why did I set to get the more information? We had a story in one of the meetings that me and Arab, who we sat together. Actually, we, we were the Arab and the social worker then. No, 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 no. I was with a different one. Sorry. Three, three boys came to the meeting. The father is 90 something. He has Alzheimer. He's in the hospital. And the son, he got, he, he became, he couldn't talk and he couldn't walk. He had problems walking already. Like, yeah, he had a, 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 a deterioration. And the son, we were talking, we're talking like he said, everybody spoke. What we usually do is we let the, the family talk about the person. First of all, tell me about, I want to know the person. I want to know how the person was to you, the father. What kind of father was he? Who, he was, who, he, who was he for you? And it's funny to see how much a lot of the things the kids do not know that somebody else thinks about. It's, it's nice to see. And they're like shocked and, and they get a lot of it, out of it. And then he says to me, at the end of the, uh, after the rabbi said the, the boundaries of the halacha, he says to me, I don't understand why the doctors don't tell me that he had a stroke. I stopped the rabbi. I said, no, one second, we have to clear something here. I am not a doctor, but I do not think, uh, I want you to go and ask the doctor if he had a stroke. I do not think that he had a stroke. He had a, deter a, a deterioration of the Alzheimer's. That's what happened. And that's why he stopped talking and he stopped swallowing. It's not because he had a stroke. And he looked at me and in the Zoom, he said that he doesn't want to tell you what the good things are doing. I love the Zoom now. And we, when we started, I said to him, no way, I am not doing Zoom. He said to him, no way, no way, this is not. I can't touch the Zoom, but I can't, I can't be close to the Zoom. I can't do Zoom. It's not a social worker thing to do Zoom. Now I'm in love with the Zoom and as a family thing. It's, it's, it's amazing. I see that, because everybody sits by themselves. Here we sit together. Think that you're sitting in yourself in your room and you want to say something and your sibling is not next to you and you don't see your sibling like moving uncomfortable when you talk and then you shut up because, okay, she's not comfortable, so I will shut up. You don't see it. You're by yourself you, because you see only the face. The face, not, not every, when you speak, you don't even pay attention. And for me, that's for, the, that's for the family members. For me, as a social worker, it's the best. I see the face and I see every face by itself. I don't have to move my eyes to see the group. I don't have to see them. I don't have to, 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 to show that I look at them because it's a very small screen. You see everybody and you see every motion and you can see, and that's what I saw when he said, I said, he, like, he made a face. I said, oh, what's the problem? What's bothering you? And he said to me, why does the doctor don't tell me that he has a stroke? I said, because he didn't, he didn't have a stroke. And then you saw on his face the relax. Ooh. So why am I fighting and what? That he's gonna go down more. Like, and he figured it out. Like it's it, it, it's something little that happens that you can, and that's where you have to get the more information from the doctors in order to understand exactly what the problem is. And as I've, I, I came in the minute he said it, um, uh, we said together as a family get the whole information together. And I don't care it's, if it's Corona and not Corona, come with mask, he's gonna meet you. He has them to meet you together as a family. He wants in a Zoom to meet you together, let him meet you together in a Zoom. To tell you, tell you together what's going on with your father before you get any, any solution. Because when you come to the hospital, the doctor says what happened today. He says to you like this, he says to you like that, you, interpret it like this, you interpret, everyone interpret it differently. If you hear it together, you're gonna to interpret it mostly almost the same thing. And then you can get a decision. You cannot get a decision without all, all the information in front of you. What else do we have here? Okay. Um, I'm getting to the fact of Zohar Adresa, so if you have questions about what we said until now. Questions? Something? Okay. So I have a slave. As he said, it's a it's a um, social worker and a rabbi together. I didn't stand in time. Sorry for the men that are leaving. Um, but God is God is before me. Um, um, 
um, Alava and the social worker, I'm coming from, uh, when we started, I, I did, a, I was one of the facts of getting everybody in the, in the learning part of how do we work together. And the first thing I asked them, how do you see it? How do you, I, I, we were sitting there, 10 of the name, 10 of them sociali, and I asked them, how do you see it working? And one of them probably says, I don't see it working. And I said to him, you know what, I agree with you. As somebody that grew up in a house of Rabbanim, of rabbis, for me to sit and to be a co with a rabbi was, I couldn't even imagine in how I'm doing it. Like, I have a mom. Like, I was taught, taught the respect of a rabbi all the time. How do I compare myself to him and be? And when you sit as a group, you have to be together. You can't, you can't be above me. You can't. We have to be the same. And one of the rabbis said the same. Yeah, no, you can't. I'm always the same. I said, them, okay, let's see. I don't know no, what he said. He said, I don't know how a social worker can help me. I can do what she can do. I think I have only the same second almost quote. He like looked at him and said, them, it's okay. It's okay. We said that everybody can say whatever they want. Oh yeah. We did a little bit of, uh, we did them, a, we gave them a little bit of like, uh, everybody was playing. And we came back and I asked them, how do you feel now? He was shocked. He said to me, he looked at me and he looked at everybody and said, I'm sorry. He said, I'm sorry. She helped me so much. Like he, he realized, First of all, the, the, whoever played the family played very well if, the, if, if it got to that point. But he realized that that was the best thing for him, that somebody was there to get the family together, to put the family there, to get the, the family to really listen to what the rabbi said. It's a hard thing to decide. And the boundaries are to them and to them. And you have to listen. Sometimes, I again, the Zoom, I'm getting to the Zoom part too. Again, the Zoom. Sometimes you can see at the, at the face of the family that they understood what the rabbi said, but they didn't. So I, as a social worker, usually say, um, did you say, can you explain to me? I didn't understand. Can you explain to me exactly what the boundaries are? I don't want to didn't understand, not the family. And then it explains again. And you see the family, like, let him, let him explain again because we didn't get, get you up. That's what we offer together. And it works amazing. Like we got to be friends. So we, they call me for social media. I call them for many things. We're very, we're very close to each other now. It's very fun. It's very, it's a lot of fun to, to see it. Um, it's very important for everybody to get together. The family is together under the decision. We spoke about that. And on the Zoom, you get everybody. I had a meeting with the family, the Father was in America. So sitting, he was sick in America with his wife, sitting there, and the daughter that lives next to them, and one son I think lives in Israel, and he and he asked for the meeting. The problem was with the medication. Um, the hospital sent him home. Sent him home with the with the with the Irka, um, taking care of palliative care. The palliative care they had. Not more few minutes, and they told the wife, "You can give it to him." They didn't tell her what the what the exact dose to give, when to give. You can give it to him whenever he wants it. Give it to him. Oh, she had a problem. She had a nephew that is a doctor, and she had a son-in-law that is a doctor. And they told her, "You cannot do that. The minute you can give him a little bit more than the dose that he can get, you're killing him." And the halachic. The religious orthodox does not let you to do that. And she was, we sat in the meeting, the English ones, unfortunately I'm the only English speaker, social worker there, so I do it. And we sat there and I had so much pity on the wife because the husband there said to her, give me a knife just to kill myself because he was suffering. And she here, she can't do anything. And she was said, but why can I give it to him? The doctor told me. The Orthodox doesn't, he didn't, she didn't say that the son, the Orthodox doesn't let me. And I had a lot of pity on her. And the daughter was sitting there and talking about her father and started to cry again. We did the same thing. I wanted the mother to see, to hear what they think and what they had 
of the father and to show them that even though that they know that they're suffering, they still know that he wants to keep the halacha. And that's why it's not because they're being mean to him. They love him very much, but they can't. And it was amazing to see when the daughter cries, she said to the mother how the mother took her and put her on her. She was upset with the daughter because it was her husband that said no. But she, anyway, she took her and she put her on her lap and it was on her, on her shoulder and she hugged her. It was an emotional thing. At the end, they decided what they, at the end, I think he passed away by himself like a week afterwards. But the mother calmed down. She understood that she can't, they can get, they, I said to them, talk to another doctor, let, give a doctor and doctor in the family to tell them. That's what the decision at the end was, to tell her how much exactly to give. And that's what they did. We brought somebody, and he gave him really little, little amount. He, he, he calmed down, he didn't, he didn't suffer, but he passed away because that was, was supposed to go anyway. That's another thing of everybody together and listening. We do it in America. We can do it whenever, wherever, because of the Zoom. Um, I think I finished. So questions for what I've always asked, question for myself. I thought I've gone a thousand more stories, but you said 10 o'clock, so I, I did it 10 o'clock, sorry. Um, question about what I've always said about Somebody that didn't understand what I have always said that wants a little bit of Yeah. What is, I suggest how what the mother's doing or no one knows what this is doing, no one knows about appointment. One knows one thing, one knows another thing. How do you move straight in that? You zoom dial in by telephone. So you, yeah. their, you don't see the face. So you can mm -hmm. people who zoom up, you can dial into Zoom. From the zoom telephone. But, but you can have Zoom and the people who do. You don't have to zoom. zoom. You don't have to zoom. zoom. You don't have to zoom. You don't have to zoom. You You talk on the phone. You talk on the phone with uh, a meeting phone, and the WhatsApp you can. And I don't know WhatsApp. They probably don't have a WhatsApp either. But uh, you can do a sihat vida, a count of counts of. That's how you count it. So you do the different times. You do the different times. You don't have a choice because you have to get something to be together, to be something steady that everybody understands everything. One of the one of the things that we just had, not like that, but one of the, another story that we just had, to the meeting you can bring whoever you want as a family. The last meeting that I had was a friend, somebody that I know, I, the family doesn't know, but I know that I know the lady. And they brought the doctor, one of a friend doctor that they wanted to be, be in the thing. For us, it's fine. We don't care. It can be whatever helps the caregivers to get the answer and to get what they need. That's what we're here for, to be there for you. And again, we do not come instead of the doctors. We do not come instead of the social workers of the hospital. We came, we come extra. Okay, no questions? Did we answer your question? Did we help you a little bit? Sorry. But you have to try getting a way of talking all of you together. And I understand that none of you are in the same country what you just said. Just have to find one hour that everybody gets together, even if you have to leave work for it for an hour to talk about it. Decide and talk about it. Because you have to talk to each other. If not, it's not, it's not gonna work. Where is the parent? Somebody is near the parent? Uh, my my daughter, another grandchild. Yeah. So, yeah, it's, just, it's, it's the same thing. Right. It's the same thing, but we get together. Something else, yes. Uh, I'm going to flip it. Okay. Um, so if someone has elderly parents, and so they're obviously still their child, but the child actually needs guidance, help, assistance. Um, should the child just automatically not bother them, or is it acceptable? 
to continue to rely on them for advice and guidance? Should they, the child just turn just to other people, other sources? No, other? no. As I said, a parent stays a, stays a parent. If he can, if he can still guide guide you, the fact that he cannot walk and he cannot shower himself doesn't mean that his brain is not there. Just the extra worry. No, I, I won't. I try not worrying them, but you can still ask them for advice. Give them the even better is to give them the give them the the feel that the, right, she said it right. The feel that they still need it. I won't bother them with a lot. I won't have bothered somebody that is not sick, an elderly parent, with worry because they worry more than what us, the one we do. Can tell you a story with my mother now again, another story. My daughter gave birth. I was in Karen Reim. Karen Reim is near Miriam. At night, I was, and I said, I am not going back in the morning, 11.30 at night. Not going back in the morning because then I'm going to have to stand in a, in a, in a, in a jam, in a, a traffic jam, and you know what? St standing today in a traffic jam in that area is more dangerous than going at 1130 at night. Sorry, that's my opinion for now. So I said, at the beginning, when I said to her that I'm staying to sleep, was a quarter to 11, I really, really instead, really wasn't then still staying. And then I thought about it, I said, no way. And she didn't know. She had to sleep when I sleep. She didn't have to know that I'm on the wall. I got home the day after. She was very upset. Yes, but she found out. And I was very happy because I was in my bed. The questions? Yes. I don't have a, I don't have a question, but I think just by looking that I'm the oldest person in the room. So I and you can give us the advice. Exactly. So what do you have to ask me? <laughs> when you take care of the spouse, I, I was talking also about the, the people that uh, is taking care of the spouse. Well, my spouse had a working class. So you don't take care, you're not a caregiver anymore. You're being, you, you, you can be be the one that they take care of. Right. You, advice to give you? Listen to your kids when they want to help you and let them help you. I know that it's very hard. Sometimes it's very hard to say, you know what? You're right. Something very hard to say. Very hard. I know. I know. I said that it's very hard. Isn't it? I know. And you know what's better for you. And sometimes you do not want to be the third, the third party. You don't want to be baby. You don't want to be a burden. Let your kids decide when you're a burden and that. And when they they say that you, they can't take, you, they can't. You want something to do, and they say, "Mom, I can't. I'm very busy." busy. Accept it. Accept it. You, you say why? Not that's everybody. That's what you have to do. It's a lot of acceptance. Accept it and not and not get insulted that she's and not get insulted that she helps somebody else before you. I don't. You say no, no. I'm saying you asked what advice. And I'm not, telling you right, things right, that I sorry, sorry. no. It's fine. It's <laughs> things that I know from around. Okay, that parents sometimes don't. They don't want to be a burden. But on the other side, when the when the child says to them. I'm very busy now. I can't. I will. I will come tomorrow, and they forget tomorrow because they have so many, as we said, so many things at the head. If you don't remember, if you don't remind her, she will not remember. I'm talking about myself. My mother asked a lot of things, and I said, "Emma, do me a favor. Send me a text in the morning to remind me to do it. The fact that I say today that I will do it doesn't remind. Tomorrow morning, it can be that you need to speak, and then I don't have outside." It does have a lot of things that don't mind. Okay, right. So that's what I my advice is just try being easier, easy for them. I hope the child is here. <laughs> She's gonna help what I just said. Yes. What advice would okay. you give a caregiver, a caregiver who's confronted with a special situation where the person they're taking care of is is not seeing reality? That you know that they they believe they're seeing something and they want to talk about something that's not real. Do you, you can't correct them. No. Listen. You listen. Just listen. You just go along with it. Yeah. Especially if, if they were diagnosed sick. Yeah. Especially. Just listen. Listen and change the subject. Listen and I change the subject. I was a caregiver for my late father for many years and um, had a difference of opinion with another member of the family. And I was doubling the front of the shoulder against the white wall. 
Malik Father would say, Oh, look how your little kids have a thing, look how little girl in the dress, and she a cute too. And I would go along with it the whole time. And it could happen every day, okay. a few times a day. And the other person in my family said, You know what, maybe try to not, not to correct him, but stay away from thoughts that were completely inaccurate. He enjoyed seeing the little, little child with the red dress. Yeah. What do you care? No, no, did it no, bother? No. Did it bother somebody? I would have changed a place, not standing more in front of a white wall, mm -hmm. because that probably would have what in his head was bothering him. The white wall in front of his head, in his face, I would have changed near the window or something for him to see, because he probably the davening, probably understood. He probably understood what he's doing. I doubt it. So you would encourage the okay, KB to go along with every many just years. Go with it. Yeah. Just don't, don't, don't say, don't. don't. When somebody has a kind of a dementia, do not bite it. It's not going to help. Don't get, you don't have to encourage it. Don't encourage it, but don't, don't fight it. Oh, yeah, you're right. Fine. Continue. Change the subject to something else. No, no, not the <laughs> Sometimes it's not when they get about if it's something about something nice like that or something that's not dangerous, fine. But sometimes it can get very nervous about something. And that you can comment down say, I'm here, I'm with you, I'm watching you, and change yourself to something else. Oh look, oh look, look, they said like that in the newspaper today. Let's read it together. Something like that. I can tell you a story about talking a little bit about dementia and uh, Alzheimer. One of my patients came and uh, we have a, a support group. And she came one day and she said to me, the support, the support group was very good because look, listen what I had. My husband is very, was very bad. And she finished, she's, she's, you have to see this. I'm gonna try putting you a picture. She's an old lady, she goes with the walker and the husband, she finishes giving him lunch. She's cleaning the dishes. He's sitting in the living room watching TV. The five minutes he calls her. Come for a second. She comes to him. The walker gets to him. He says to him, what happened today? We're not eating today? They finished. She's washing the dishes. She looks at him. She turns him around. She turns him around back. She says, you know, you're right. I, I was so busy, I totally forgot. I'm going to go warm up the food. By this time, I'm going to bring you a coffee, a, a cup of coffee and a cookie. Will that be okay for now until the food? Oh, yes, you're a very good wife. She went, she bought him the drink. He forgot totally about the fact that he wanted lunch. And that was the end of that one. Instead of getting upset, yelling at him with <laughs> Showing him, taking a lot of people, a lot of people will take him to show him that she's washing the dishes now. So, what will that get? He's gonna feel better, and you're gonna feel better. What will that get to you? Nothing. I want to give a few little tips about a parent that lives by himself. Okay. First of all, the door. A knob, like this, they call it in Hebrew, mafteach. It's like. It looks like it's not a key inside. It's the, it's a, a key, a permanent key that stays in the door. Papa, Papa. a butterfly, a butterfly lock, the only one because that's the one that you can go into. The knob of the of the pladelit. Do me a favor, take it off. It's the most dangerous thing and the most stupid thing that it can be because everyone that wants to rob the house, it will take him exactly another. Not second. A few minutes, and if 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 the person is on the floor, that few seconds can kill him. Just take it off. The fact that they say that they never close it, but the day that they won't feel good, that's the day that they're gonna close it. Do me a favor, take it away. You don't need it. It's a waste. Another thing, a button, an emergency button. Have it and go with it on your hand all the time. My mother fell. After she fell, now she's, it's on her all the time. She had to fall in order to understand that what I said was correct. The fact that she fell in, Baruch Hashem, the 
cleaning lady was there and the cleaning lady was the one that because, because of what she felt, that's a different story. But that was our mother. She was there, she called us immediately and we came. But if not, she would have died in the house until I don't know when, until she would have got, or I would have called and see that she's not answering me and get to the house. But if not, she would have just died there. So emergency, and if they have the emergency on the hand, please. There is an emergency button that is like a necklace. Um, it's good if you fall. Personally, I don't like it because it's very, very delicate. And I say that if a person 90 years old falls on his head and cannot press the button, sorry, I'm in so hard medicine for my kids. As my mother said, don't come to save me. Come when I'm not here anymore. Because when the fact that you will save them and they're gonna be all into it because as I love Uri said, mother comes, mother comes to save life. So they don't ask questions. Immediately they put they put uh, an shama. Immediately. That's their law. So what? Think she's gonna be paralyzed, not with me, and she's gonna suffer, everybody around's gonna suffer. For what? She's gonna suffer. That's the word was that she said to me, I don't wanna suffer. If I fall in my head, don't pick me up. That's what I got a thought by quote. Something else? Trying to do, yes. Make sure you change the battery. Of what of them. I, I say more than that, check it once a month that it works. My mother once a month just checks it, it calls, she says everything is okay. So that was for that, I hope I was helpful. Um, um, oh, that's for sure. That's what who has people. That's what I said. A parent stays our parents forever. That's our squeal. Um, if somebody wants, I'm available for any questions anytime. If you want my phone number, I can give it. To you. Thank you very much. For being You're welcome. Very much. Uh, if anyone wants to talk to me about matters uh, that have to do with uh, with the talk today, um, or uh, or with Debbie or up uh, Genzel, and I have that. Well, yeah, you have my you have my phone number too. You can you can give it to everyone. It's fine. And if you need, I will come again. It took me more than two hours, but I will come again. God Almighty! I'm six, and 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 the cliche should took me more than two hours. I want to What? My